These little seeds have nearly two times the fiber, calcium, potassium, and iron over chia. The magical part is 10 times more prebiotic over chia. Can you share with the audience a little bit of your background, where you originated from, and how you ended up in the United States? Of course. So I'm originally a refugee from Afghanistan. Uh, escaping that war-torn country when I was a child, about 10, uh, faith would have it that we survived, and I ended up immigrating not only to U U.S., but I grew up here in California um, and went on to get myself educated. I um, obtained a bachelor's in finance after business school. I got into banking and real estate, zero intention of getting into health or wellness or food and beverage industry <laughs> but faith would have it and a couple of awakening moments in my life um, basically forced me or encouraged me to reevaluate the purpose of my life i went on to start a socially responsible brand the water initially making a difference around the world building water wells with its mission uh, which was great, but then it wasn't so great on the planet, so I had to revisit my mission, and that led me to the healing powers of what now you know as Zen Basil. Uh, and for anyone who might not be familiar with Zen Basil, basically they look like chia. On a ground-to-ground -ground comparison, these little seeds have nearly two times the fiber, calcium, potassium, and iron over chia. So it's, uh, of course, the magical part is 10 times more prebiotic over chia. And if a superfood is going to be a superfood, it has to be anti-inflammatory, which means it has to be lectin-free. Right, Dr. G? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, okay, so so wait a minute. So now you're a refugee. Uh, you probably got uh, exposed to the standard American diet. <laughs> and you probably incorporated the standard American diet uh, into your lifestyle. And, and then what happened? Well, uh, like you said, as all immigrants, when we get here, we think everything, we're just so happy to, to, to be alive, to survive. And of course, everything in America, the richest country in the world, is a privilege and honor and must be way better. So I had no idea that there was any issues with our food system. Um, McDonald's and Burger King, these, these were our favorite, you know, fast food, which we called it a meal, you know, dinner. Um, my entire family loved it. We enjoyed it. It's delicious. Um, so we lived off of your typical Western diet. And when I experienced, you know, weight issues in my teens, you know, there was the cleansing method. You juice for a couple of weeks, drop 10 pounds, no problem. You get back to it. And that yo-yo cycle continued in my 20s. Um, then I found the over-the-counter appetite suppressant. And just when the weight would creep up, you would get on a couple of pills and then you were fine. And in my 30s, my own health advocate would actually, my doctors would prescribe weight management prescription appetite control pills mm. which must be safe because my doctors are giving it to me so basically i had no idea i had an eating disorder this yo-yo of like i was up 20 pounds up and down up and down all the way down to my 40s and in my 40s everything kind of broke and it wasn't working anymore i realized that you know i'm like 35 pounds overweight, um, which literally put me in an obese category, and I had no idea that I'm obese. I mean, I was in a denial. Yeah. Um, and, and it just, the, 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 the health factor of what I was experiencing, which I thought it was normal, because, you know, um, everyone puts on weight when you're in your late 40s, and okay, fine, that these appetite control pills are not working, and I actually was like messing up my mind. Um, and then my son's health, my mother's health, all of this was happening essentially, you know, it took like three decades to get there, but it was a lot of awakening to say the least. And that's when I start digging a little further into what is really 
wrong. And of course, the conclusion is our food, we're not broken. You shouldn't fall apart at 50. You shouldn't like accept what I was accept, expect, accepting um, at 50. You should, uh, you should focus on healing. And that healing comes from food, not prescription. And whether it's over the counter or wherever it's coming from, that is not healing. That's band-aiding and giving you a lot of side effect. Um, so there was a lot of awakening that I experienced in my late 40s, essentially, that it's obvious. I mean, the fact, okay, so let's talk about the fact that our food system is broken. When I start digging a little further in, 90, okay, so here's the statistics that like shocks me. 40%, I wasn't, my family was not alone. My, my weight is not isolated case, 40% of Americans today are in the obese category. We know what obesity crisis is doing to our health and, and how it contributes to just about every single disease under the sun. And we kind of accept that. So then you look into even further, especially when, you know, uh, we went through the epidemic, 50% of us are pre-diabetic, and according to CDC, 80% of us are not even aware of it. So I'm thinking, okay, 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy. That is a scary statistic, especially because we live in the most you know, abundant, richest country in the world. We should not be okay with this. So yeah, I... I strongly think that we have a food system that is basically empty calories missing nutrients so okay so you're like almost everybody else in america what what did you do what happened to you to say okay this is not working i'm going to do something else well as i was learning from you know amazing educators like yourself i ran into you know plant paradox early on and i thought okay my gut feeling yeah our food system is really broken um but that wasn't like really moving me until this last procedure that my son had to go through so let me backtrack a little bit as like i said immigrants we accept everything is shiny and perfect here so when my son was born and of course you know as a mother uh we don't think so much of like taking care of ourselves, but our children. Now that's where things move. I mean, I, 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 I always explain how motherhood explained or defined the true meaning of love for me, the unconditional, the definition of what true love really means is when I became a mom. And my son, he had common allergy that went on to become labeled asthma. Then he was put on antibiotics, and this is two, when he's just two. He's put on antibiotics, he's getting steroids, he's getting this version of antibiotics, and, that, and he's constantly running, flaring up into some kind of a, uh, you know, infection, and then he needs antibiotics. And of course, pediatrics are prescribing it, I'm accepting it, this is normal. His little body went through so much procedure, so many health issues that the finale was this one particular operation that he was going through and things didn't work out, things went wrong. And that's when life kind of like, that was a moment that I knew things are not, shouldn't be accepted. This, this is not, at that point, this was, you know, I, w I had educated myself. Uh, what I didn't learn in school, but you know, just basically searching for better way I knew that there are things that are broken way further in and we need to focus on healing. We need to focus on getting to the root cause of what is it that this child of mine needs to be on antibiotics for. We did the math. There was not a month. Every other month he was prescribed some form of antibiotics for 20 years of his life. Wow. I don't have to tell you now, Dr. G, and your audience are familiar, on what that level of antibiotics does to a young man's body and microbiome and health. So I'm learning all this. And then if that wasn't enough, and, and you know, like I said, a couple of moments of life just really woke me up. My mom's health started to deteriorate so 
dramatically that currently she's basically trapped in a 90 year old body when she's only in her 70s mm. um it started off with a little gut you know pain and then next thing we know it's one pill to 15 pills and 15 pills twice a day and every single organ in her body has failed and it's um it's heartbreaking to watch that yeah okay so you know the whole family is, is a mess um and so again where where did you start uh, obviously now you know this is a crisis this can't go on uh you know you're watching a parent go downhill you're watching your child go downhill uh, you're you're watching yourself addicted to you know diet pills etc cetera, etc cetera. uh and you're yeah. you're a big uh, financial wizard um but you can't even manage your own <laughs> body right or my well like i said i was chasing the american dream little that i put any kind of a concentration on the importance of health because in my opinion back then that's taken care of we have one of the finest health system in the world yeah. so yeah. um you know you have a pain you go to the doctor and you get a pill and you're good so it was my ignorance really for this space that no your health is you not in the hands of others um so once i started to really kind of educate myself around how broken and how much my family is not isolated so I'm, I'm i'm understanding the importance of value of food and healing that's how we get to the root cause of issues and i'm running into statistics like you know 95 percent of us are missing the most important nutrient fiber 95 percent of americans are malnutrition on fiber that's like uh, you know and then it goes on 50 percent of us are missing key nutrient magnesium 40 percent um need supplement and calcium so that should be from our food not from supplements the latest study i just run into now is uh columbia says no 30 percent of us are iron deficient so these are like basic nutrient that we must run on and yet the entire population is, is is affected so i'm searching for healing concepts and i had no idea or like no you know expectation that i was going to run into this treasured seed but in the early days i um had heard a lot from my late father in regards to a gentleman who had lived in um in our region actually he was he was born like a thousand years ago. You might know his, his name is Abis Ibn Sina in our culture and my language. Um, I don't know if you've heard of his book, The uh, Canon of Medicine. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, his name was translated in, in the, uh, later on in, uh, I think it's like in the 13th century, his work, um, he's still regarded as the, the father of modern day medicine because it was canon of medicine that that created or established the early days of medical school so um he left many books and my father would always talk about if this you know this and if this you know that i ran in and i'm searching for healing ingredients i ran into one of his books literally called the book of healing good name <laughs> so it's kind of like it was sent to me so i'm going through this material and he's talking about what we uh call basal basal in our language uh rayon so there's a whole section around basil just the plant and how it's healing how it's good for your gut your mind your heart um it gets rid of parasites and he goes on and on and on how the concentrated nutrient are in the seeds now early on when i had seen chia i was sure it's basil seed or tukhmerayon because we didn't call it basil seed we called it tukhmerayon so chia was a foreign name too when i first saw it in the market i thought for sure that's tukhmerayon which in my language basil seeds so long story short it was the the work of ibn sino that actually 
clarified, no, 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 chia has nothing to do with basil seeds. And, and even when I was going through his work, I kept thinking, I probably will find chia. There was no mention of chia. In fact, chia is not native to our culture or, or, or environment, but basil is. And so that's how this whole idea of let me dig a little further in. What is he talking about in terms of basil seed healing powers and 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 how could this one thing be good for your gut and your mind and your heart? And then the people in my culture would always talk about how these seeds, once I established, no, 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 these are two different seeds, how, how is these seeds good for your hair, nails, and skin? That part was like puzzling. Like I, it was too good to be true. Kind of like I, I couldn't, I didn't believe it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's like old wife tale. I mean, how could this one little seed be good for your hair, nail, and skin? And then I run into your work, and of course, I understand it's all about gut health. And um, so the motivation kept digging in, gearing me, basically guiding me that, no, no, you need to look further into this area. Yeah. So this, <laughs> so this was really, I mean, this was your culture teaching you that, you know, one of the answers you're looking for uh, has been known about for thousands of years, basically. And, you know, why the, heck, why the heck aren't you looking into this? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting story. I, years ago, uh, I, I had a patient whose son had a chia seed company. And mm -hmm. I actually had a big bag of chia seeds in my office that I would show patients. Yeah. And um, I was on the phone to a colleague, uh, Lauren Cordain, the, the father of the paleo diet. Um, and we were talking about things. We were thinking about writing a book together. And I said, you know, uh, we got to talk about chia seeds because they're so important and they're so good for you. And he said, don't you read the literature? And I said, what are you talking about? Of course I read the literature. And he said, well, I'm going to send you two papers. And it's the last time chia seeds are ever going to go in your mouth. And I said, what? <laughs> So he sent me a couple of papers, uh, human studies, where humans, we wanted to find out chia seeds have a short chain omega-3 fat, which is true, and that's why they're so healthy. And so they gave these to people, and they looked at their omega-3 fat levels, their alpha-linoleic acid levels, and in fact, they went up. And supposedly that's very anti-inflammatory. But lo and behold, the groups that got the chia seeds, even though these anti-inflammatory compounds went up, they, their inflammation markers, as measured by C-reactive protein, actually went up rather than down. And so, you know, he was lecturing me over the phone saying, you see, it's not what people think. And he says, so you know, get that bag out of your office and I've never let anybody have them again. And when I started researching chia seeds, lo and behold, they contain a lectin. And I said, duh, well, of course. And, you know, <clears throat> the mommy plant wants to protect her babies. And that's one of the ways of doing it. So, and you're right, basil seeds are totally different than chia seeds. But your brilliance is that basil seeds act like chia seeds in, in the way they behave in water and in puddings and in, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, they get this wonderful gelatinous fiber that anybody can see. But as opposed to chia seeds, yeah, look at that. It, these things are actually a phenomenal source of a prebiotic fiber that feeds your gut. So um, you've done some nutritional analysis of, of basil seeds, right? Yeah, I have. Actually, um, I need to thank you again for highlighting that human study on chia because had it not been for your highlighting, I wouldn't have even discovered that. Like I said, in the early days, about 20 years ago, when I saw chia, I personally thought that that was 
our version of Tukhmerayon, basil seeds. In fact, just yesterday, one of my friends, also from Afghanistan, um, popular on social media, and she's like, he's like, yeah, I thought chia was basil seed too. So my family and friends still call my brand chia. Oh, you're doing the chia thing? They say that until today. You're doing the chia thing. You're into, you're you're talking about chia. No, it's not chia. So and 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 this is a common theme. E like I still go through and find YouTube videos of individuals talking about basil seed and their language because in, in India it's called something else, and Pakistan is called something else, and Afghanistan, etc., and Egypt is called something else. So areas that are historically familiar with the values of basil and basil seeds they are translating it to chia ah. so the actual i mean i literally ran into a youtube video with over two million views and the healer was talking about uh, basil seed in his language and the translation of the youtube video was chia 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 so um you know what when things become popular in the U.S., it uh, we lead the way. It becomes popular across the world. So right now, if you go into other parts of the world, they're still going to say chia is more healthier, better for you, even though historically there's no track record of this ingredient existence in our and in, in, in history i mean it's been popular for the past two three decades primarily in america and europe but go back you know 100 200 years and it didn't exist um so the, and, and then to backtrack when i was reading the book of healing Basil by itself, as you highlight so well in regards to the leaf, has been well, you know, studied and, and there's no doubt in regards to its nutrient and values and healing and polyphenols. But the chia seeds leaves were only known as pechia. So there's really no concentration here's you know when people say well how's this of superfood i say well and and your paper actually helps me validate that point if a food is considered superfood it should be rich in nutrient and it should be healing it's both if it's rich in nutrient but inflammatory it's literally counterproductive right right exactly <laughs> so that's that's basically how i would identify if the natural healers said it's healing if the Ayurveda medicine and chinese medicine all validated which was all in regards to basil seed clearly this is where the magic is so um yeah it uh, th all of that education for me was kind of you know peeling off this onion that whoa there's something bigger than me and my family here we've gotten this wrong um so so then i went back in the early days this is like over five years ago i literally started testing what was only available was in these little asian stores that no one knew and there was named something else like subject seeds so i started testing some doing some basic lab work not a whole lot of you know nutritional value coming out so i'm still like confused okay so a lot of data says chia is better for you a lot of health advocates are promoting chia so chia is good for you but then the natural healers Ibn Sino said no it was basil basil seeds so you know all of so I had to continue to research and then I found that no there's over 150 different basil plants to source from the seeds and the regions and the farming practices all make a unique different attributes of its healing and and its purpose of, of, of nutrient count so that's when i knew that this had to be explored and i kept investing my time my life my career to make sure that this is um captured and and that's when i discovered the seeds that now you see us in basil power when the lab results came from this strain and we're looking at over 50 percent fiber i knew that this is going to be a magical thing because i knew fibers 
the most important nutrient for our metabolic health, according to you and um, Dr. Lustig's metabolic health and so many other um, health advocates um, that are, have educated us about fiber. So that's where, until today, I still have so much miscommunication around this subject, but I kept digging into various different strengths so I can um, basically find a baseline. Where is it? And I have to establish that. That's another uh, talk about nutritional panel. So when I first started Zen Basil, this was my package. And I said, Zen Basil, basil seeds, 100% organic basil seeds. Um, I didn't do any chia comparison. People still ask me questions like, are those for planting? Are those for eating? Uh, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Here, look at my nutritional panel on the back. It's, uh, it's got way more fiber, in fact, nearly two times, and it's got way more calcium, way more iron and, and potassium, and, 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 and it hydrates faster, etc. It was a deep, slow, long conversation to go from basil plant. Does it smell like basil? No, it doesn't smell like basil. It's not like the leaf. It's more the concentration of the nutrient. So it was a deeper conversation. And then from there, I went on to put it right in the front, loud. <laughs> Zen basil looks like chia, but it's not. It's got nearly two times the fiber, and and in one serving you get 15 grams of fiber, and that's when the conversation conversation got a little bit more exciting because people recognize that oh, so it's got more fiber. I want fiber because somebody said I need fiber, and then um and and it got a little easier. But the nutrient count. This is like literally my third um baseline that I've created in terms of nutritional fact sheet. So I'm constantly testing, establishing that baseline because uh, to, to give you uh, an, an idea of how these panels are, are created, traditionally in the U.S., if we go to, if I wanted to build a brand, I go to the U.S. database and all of the popular ingredients, including chia, is in the U.S. nutritional fact sheet database. You extract what you need, slap it on your label, and off you go. In my case, I had to establish this category. I had to test and retest and then send my food science lab results to my um, FDA labeled uh, agency uh, authority to confirm and then validate and verify so it's been a journey <laughs> to come up to this point. All right. So I noticed, you know, you've you've mixed it in water and clearly it makes a wonderful, you know, gel. So uh, what do you do with that? Do, uh, am I just going to throw a bunch in my mouth and crunch it or? Uh, <laughs> and, and the reason I'm doing that, because as you know, in my most recent book, Unlocking the Keto Code, I've got a Love tropical it. basil seed pudding in there. But tell me how you started incorporating this into, into your diet and how do you teach others to do it? Well, I have like a host of recipes that's online for free and I'm constantly coming up with new recipes and I share that on Instagram. So I, I encourage anyone who's interested in other ways to, to follow along on Instagram with me. But basically the nutrient is in the locked into these seeds. So the simplest way that you would want to incorporate it is simply hydrated in water as I just did. Pour in your favorite, you know, I like it with coconut milk. Bam, that's it. It's a pudding. Uh, whatever addition you want to add, the pistachios or all the other healing, mulberries. Th these are, by the way, superfoods in my culture that you're constantly sharing. So, by the way, the book of healing speaks about so much of what you've been promoting from pistachios to uh, walnuts to mulberries. mulberries and so yeah. Yeah, um, but basically water, yogurt of your choice, milk of your choice, and you got yourself a nutrient rich uh, that is not just fiber rich. We're talking about calcium, potassium, iron, magnesium, so many incredible healthy enzymes, the prebiotic aspect of it. Um, in fact, one published paper was validating exactly that 10 times the prebiotic fiber over chia. Now that we understand microbiome, 
I, I know how the, the natural healers in my culture said this is good for your gut and mine because the whole concept of microbiome understanding of this philosophy is rather new, but somehow those guys a thousand years ago knew that if you take care of your gut, chances are the rest of it will be doing really well too. <laughs> no, that's absolutely true. Um, you know, Hippocrates, the Western father of medicine, 2,500 years ago said all right. disease begins in the gut. And I, I've actually got a, a Buddhist scholar who's recently become one of my patients, a man. He's actually gone back and looked at the ancient Sanskrit uh, translations of the Buddha. And one of the things he shared with me that the Buddha said that enlightenment begins in the intestines. And wow. yeah, and you go, wow. So, you know, one of the great thinkers of, of, of Eastern thought was saying the same thing as the, you know, the father of Western medicine, and they were actually contemporaries. And so all these guys, and like in the, Af the African culture, all these guys knew this, how they knew it is amazing because they didn't have the sophisticated, you know, lab tests that we have now, but they were right. And one of the things that's important that I've emphasized is that the reason these prebiotic fibers are important is that this is what our bacteria, our probiotics eat, and they in turn make these compounds that are now called postbiotics that actually are a huge part of the, the gut brain connection. And so, so much of our not only, you know, gut health is really correlating now to our brain health and our mental health and our levels of depression and anxiety, which are, you know, through the roof. Uh, it's because, you know, our gut health is, is so poor. So, you know, anything we can do, and you got twice the fiber of chia seeds and Again, we've known, you're right, the healing powers of basil have been known you know, by almost all cultures. And, and to think they can be concentrated in these little bitty seeds, that you're right, do not taste like basil. Everybody goes, <laughs> eh, I'm not really wild about the taste of basil. They, they don't taste like basil. No. Yeah. Exactly. No, it doesn't. Not only that, I think that's probably one of our biggest problems. We have been marketed and convinced that you lead with taste and the the problem with taste is the fact that we've re-engineered our taste buds so excessively that the true nature of what basil you know forget the, the these are wholesome so it's not going to have any flavor by the way if you haven't tried some basil seeds yet but if you taste perfect example what you talk about in blueberries blueberries in season versus blueberries you know with the raised under certain lights but then we've taken it to another level we have these things called natural flavor that's really one ingredient that comes from like a hundred different enhanced remanufactured uh re you know created to make you get hooked on some illusion of a flavor that doesn't even exist in the nature. So now we're convinced that's what strawberry is supposed to taste like, when in fact, it's a whole other story. So, um, but yes, we have really done a number in terms of, you know, concentrating on, on taste and, and then the manufactured version of a taste is, We've forgotten that food is supposed to nourish us. The purpose of food is not to, to always taste amazing, but to be a source of energy, to feed your mitochondrias, to, yeah. to, 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 feed to, your to, you know, to make you healthy, to make you energize. Energy is not sugar. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you an interesting story. I had a dinner a couple of weeks ago with a, a very famous plastic surgeon in uh, in Beverly Hills who is a big fan of mine and he actually hands my book to all of his patients and so he, he wanted to have dinner with me and so we were, we were talking and he said you know let me tell you a story he says I'm from Canada I'm from Mont Montreal and I hope that doesn't give who this person is uh, away but 
He said, we would go out blueberry picking in, in the fall with my mother. And we'd go out, you know, to, to the blueberry patches. And my mother, we, we'd come to the first blueberries and, you know, and my mother said, no, we're not going to pick here. We're going to climb up the mountain and we're going to go to the top of the mountain. And he's going, mom, they're right here. She said, no, no, no. Uh, they struggle up there and they're smaller and they're concentrated and that's what we need to eat. And he says, you know, and I'm complaining. She's, you know, I'm complaining, mom, you know, they're right here. Let's not, come on. And she, she dragged me up the mountain. He says, you know, now, you know, reading your stuff and other stuff, I know why mom drugged me up the mountain because all the great, Stress. all the polyphenols were up there. And so, this ancient wisdom, and it, it was just his mother's ancient wisdom, um, but this has been passed down from, you know, mothers to mothers to mothers, and we, we stopped listening to all this because now everything is marketed for taste rather than health benefit. So, so good for it's, you. you. You reminded me of really important um, kind of awakening. Yes, mothers who gives the first dose of our mitochondria? That's, that's right. <laughs> and I think that, and when I discovered that and, and, and learned from you and Dr. Sinclair talking about the importance of having fruit and, and seeds and, and food that has um, weathered the storm, basically, in a, a, capable of raising in, in a stress climate, well, that's exactly what, Zen ba basil seeds, um, you know, the fact that they have these enzymes locked in them, they have a protected coat that protects them from the harsh uh, climate of the, the cold weather, the um, excess heat. In fact, they, they have to have that extra strength that, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, metabolic flexibility these days a lot. That comes from having those type of foods that have the capability of being raised in a stressed environment. Now we're nourishing at a deeper level. So, of course, I was doing the basic uh, comparison of chia seeds versus these seeds and basil seeds. I call them zen basil because not all basil seeds are the same. I did the testing and I did a lot of validation. Mm -hmm. That's that's a whole nother conversation to get into. But the importance of having stressed seeds or food that is capable of, of exactly what you just described, top of the mountain. And your your basil seeds are obviously organic. And where the heck do you grow basil seeds? Well, basil seed, the magic thing is that it is such a universal ingredient. It's grown everywhere from California to Afghanistan. So yeah. pick a region. There's not a region as long as it's a it's a warm climate. It does require a certain type of a soil. It does require a good amount of sun because, mm -hmm. again, it's that stress environment. So wherever you can find your sweet basil plant you're going to be able to find the seeds. The problem is, just like the, like I said, we lead in, in, the, in the world. The hardest part for me was tracking down and finding organic, and not only finding organic, but also getting the, the, the organic to be established in the U.S. market. I mean, that, that was a whole nother literally took me three years to accomplish that project alone to find the right the pacific strength that these seeds are and then to have it be officially certified in the u.s in the usda organic database so um i'm so proud and, and, and thrilled that not only i launched the whole idea that basil seeds are for eating but zen basil is the only USDA organic certified and verifiable in the USDA organic integrity database. So that's the part that um, I get extra excited because I've learned so much from you, Dr. Dr. G. Uh, what's the value of having something that is supposed to be healing if it's sprayed with Roundup? Yeah. If it's treated with chemicals, we're, you know, 
So, yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Now, I, we share one other very common interest, and you mentioned it when we first started. You have a, a nonprofit that provides, drills wells um, for people who have no uh, water access. And as you know, I and Gundry MD, uh, our favorite charity is Charity Water, which uh, does the exact same thing in, you know, the, the world is suffering from a lack of not only available water, but clean water. And yeah. uh, it's uh, so good for you. So uh, how did you get interested in that? Well, that was my initial awakening. I, as being a survivor from a war-torn country, I felt like with this privilege of being raised in, you know, one of the richest parts of the world comes responsibility. This was not in vain and I need to give back. So I started my charitable contribution through my previous brand, which carried on to Zen Basil. And like I say, generally, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to be committed to this cause. And the reason why for me at this point, it goes back to what my late grandmother um, would say, she would always use this one statement saying, throw it in the river and in, in, in our language. It doesn't translate really well, but in my later years, I realized the value of that statement. When you do good, we understand karma, but what she was saying was even deeper than karma. It's kind of like if you do good to someone that is Com, you know, completely forgotten and, and do it out of the, you know, without a condition, not a PR, not none of that, but from, you know, like from the heart to someone that you'll never meet, um, it will come back to you in tenfold. And I honestly, when I get uh, testimonials from my customers, I believe the fact that we give back to these forgotten women and children, especially in Afghanistan. And, and my projects, by the way, are primarily in Afghanistan because obviously everybody knows how devastating that part of the region of the world is. And, um, you know, it's the least we, I can do and my small capacity. We completed about five clean water projects um, two years ago. And right now I'm doing six clean water projects despite the harsh condition and challenges and difficulties that they're going through. So I'm committed to being some form of an assistant. And I believe that comes back enhancing the nutrient count of my product. And so when I get the testimonials, I know it wasn't just the, the, just the surface level. There's a, you know, throw it in the river, it comes back to you and tenfolds. You know, that's a good yeah. point. What what kind of testimonials are you getting from? Uh, oh, can you I, share um, a few? Absolutely. I would love to actually read to you one that um, I recently got uh, on Amazon. And uh, it just made me so emotional when I get some, uh, you know, especially... I'm not in the health, I, I was not a doctor. <laughs> so you probably get this all the time, but when I get a, um, this one particular the testimonial made me all emotional, so I have to read it for you. Great. I'm a 34 year old woman who struggled with extreme fatigue, brain fog, and constant sickness for the past two years. Needless to say, this has all left me pretty terrible mood every day, leaving, I felt like um, I was just dragging through life. I started Zen Basil Seed one month ago, and in the last three weeks, I suddenly noticed drastic reduction in my fatigue, increased energy, I mean, this is not sugar, so <laughs> increased energy, and major boost in my mood. I, like, it was validating everything what I knew the, the, the seed is, 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 is talking about. I honestly can't believe it. Uh, I can't believe the difference when... Um, when you actually have energy and you feel happy like a normal person, it's insane. And I, I, I didn't realize I was going through life in such funk, such a, for so long. Wow. Just wow. Totally life changing. I highly recommend Zen Basil Seed. I got so emotional reading. I, I actually shared that on Instagram and, and she reached out and she said, you were reading my, my, um, review so i know exactly who she is now because her initials were just nz but i was so moved with her um 
testimonial, and there's so many of this caliber. Um, my favorite is Hunger Killer. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, I, I started this journey because I know we were eating way too much, right? <laughs> and we're eating, um, you know, empty calories. We're not getting nutrient, clearly, because 95% of us are not even getting the basic fiber, but we're eating constantly. Um, so that all of this is kind of putting it together for me, and it's coming in full circle, which is um, my new product line that I hope you tried it, Dr. Oh, yeah. Thanks for sending that. I appreciate it. I um, well, actually, your your research is always helping me. I've learned so much about the value of our cellular health, the understanding of mitochondria. Um, and then I run into the research of um, from Harvard, how they were, you know, basically injecting NADs into mice and then the reverse of the age by like 20 years. Yep. Can you imagine what that would mean to my mom's health? So now my new question is how, well, this is what that, this formula is all about. How can we make NAD organically? Wouldn't that be an amazing, through food, you yeah. know? Uh, which the researchers are validating. That's exactly what happens when you reduce, recycle, reuse. That's, by the way, by new mantra for Zen Basil Cellular Hydration, we need to reduce our eating consumption and, of course, the, the uh, window restrictions uh, that you talk about in terms of eating is 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 absolutely to the not only to the point but it's been you know a huge support for my own health um and then allowing ourselves to break down that old stored stubborn what we call stubborn fat but it's really stored obesogens but the good news is that we can reverse this the good news is that we could actually have a better you know hopeful tomorrow by just doing small little tweaks i think you're gonna love this one you are what you eat but you are what the thing you're eating ate 